Hello friends, in 2023, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, referred to as the USDA, estimates that wild boar herds in 35 U.S. states will total about 6 million animals. Do you know the reason why the number of wild boars here has exploded so strongly? What measures have Texans used to deal with this invasive wild boar species? Join me to learn about the journey of dealing with ferocious wild boars in the following video. Do you know why the economy in Texas is severely affected? Because Texas is home to more than 50 invasive species that have been identified as affecting agriculture. However, wild boars are considered the most dangerous invasive species for agriculture. According to 2021 estimates, wild boar costs the corn industry about $147 million per year. Hundreds of square acres of your family's land will be attacked by wild boars. So have you ever used corn as bait to attract wild boars into your traps? If you have done it before, tell me how effective did you find it? Please comment below for other farmers to refer to. First, let's find out why corn has become such an attractive dish. Because corn contains a lot of carbohydrates, protein, and lipids, it provides a large amount of energy for animals. A wild boar can absorb and grow hundreds of pounds from the nutrients provided by corn. The natural aroma of corn is also an attractive factor for wild boars. The aroma of corn makes it easy for them to recognize and find food sources, especially in the fall. When the corn is ripening, more wild boars come to the corn fields. Another notable feature is how wild boars find their way to corn fields. They often enter through small baths to avoid people's observation, creating favorable conditions for causing harm without being detected by people. So how to deal with the increasing number of wild boars invading corn fields? The people of Texas have taken many countermeasures, but for them, using the traps is the most effective method. Setting the traps to catch wild boars is a process that requires patience from hunters. An effective method used is to use corn free to attract pigs to approach the trap. The corn inside the trap will be mixed with hunting powder to create a scent that attracts trapped wild boars. Do you know what is inside the stuff mixed with the corn that is so attractive to wild boars? And more importantly, make sure the food inside the trap is at least 18 inches away from the curb and dirt floor to encourage the pigs to approach without hesitation. Compared to placing round iron traps, this method of setting knit traps has many benefits. Knit traps provides a more open space, making wild boars feel more comfortable when approaching. Compared to setting round iron traps, setting knit traps is easier in terms of technique and preparation. Mesh traps are easy to adjust and reuse as well, while round iron traps may have to be released and replaced after each use. Setting knit traps is often more productive and provides more effective results in catching wild boars. Each time a knit trap is placed, more can be caught than when a round iron trap is placed. Yeah. 
compared to setting round iron traps. Setting the traps is easier in some aspects in terms of technique and preparation. Using mesh instead of round iron provides a more flexible option for creating a pattern that attracts pegs. Comment number one, if you think this remedy is the most effective among methods you have seen. Now let's go to another area in Texas to see how people interact with wild boar populations. The Jagger Pro Trap is a unique and effective innovation specifically designed to help farmers catch wild boars quickly and effectively. The process of setting up this trap requires finesse and careful preparation from the user to begin with. They need to assemble the panels themselves into a large block and then install the trap door and screen door according to detailed instructions. Strategically placed traps are important to optimize your chances of catching wild boars. To catch wild boars, the trap door is made from high strength steel and is capable of withstanding the impact of a wild boar weighing up to 200 pounds. The sturdiness of this trap door ensures that any wild boars caught in the trap will not be able to escape. Capture safety is a top priority because the screen door is made from steel mesh that effectively prevents all of their escape attempts. The way the Jagger Pro trap works is simple but extremely effective. When wild boar moves along the path into the trap, they touch the trigger, causing the trap door to automatically fall. With the way the trap works, do you expect the following results? As a result, you get stuck inside immediately. The special thing is that the Jagger Pro Trap not only limits catching one wild boar at a time, but can also effectively catch many wild boars at the same time. Depending on the number of wild boars in the area, with a maximum size of 10 by 6 by 5 feet. The Jagger Pro Trap is a flexible solution that can adapt to a variety of terrains. The ability to customize the size gives users more flexibility and adjust the trap to their specific needs. Their bodies, making it the ideal choice for protecting crops and livestock from the ravages of wild boars. What's more surprising is that once upon a time, each trap was developed. I advocate trapping because it is the most effective tool available to farmers in controlling invasive wild boar populations. And say the success rate of trapping is often increased when used alone in a certain area. Using both types of traps is a smart move, especially when it comes to the safety of wild boars regarding moving wild boars to nature reserves. In these places, wild boars can be free and search for food. One of the important measures to control the wild boar population without harming them is to use sterilization. This does not affect the health of the species or the surrounding environment. Do you have a better way to control wild boar populations? Please comment down below all of your suggestions so we can let everyone in Texas know. First, we must understand that American culture and American farmers do not have the habit of consuming wild animals meat in the US. Most Americans regularly favor farmed animal meat, considering it their main food source. Wild animal meat become more popular in areas with a long history of hunting and trapping. As in the western states, where there are many wild animals, wild animals meat is consumed more than in the eastern states, where consumers tend to choose farmed animal meat.
Wild animals are invasive species in the U.S. They often destroy crops, ecosystems, and are even dangerous to humans. Americans do not commonly consume them because, to harvest them, a state hunting license is required. This license can cost anywhere from a few dozen dollars to a few hundred dollars. And this can make the harvesting of wild animal meat is a little more expensive for low-income consumers. Furthermore, the U.S. states often have limits on the amount of wild boars an individual that can hunt or trap in a year. This is aimed at protecting wildlife populations. However, this may also make obtaining wild animals meat more difficult for consumers who want to use wild animal meat as a primary food source. There are 25 states in the U.S. that requires people to bring wild animal meat to wildlife quarantine facilities for inspection before eating. This testing process usually takes a few hours and can cost anywhere from $10 to $50 per bird. In the state of Texas, the cost of wildlife meat inspection is $15 per animal weighing less than 100 pounds and $20 per animal weighing 100 pounds or more. Some states that require wildlife meat testing often do so for food safety reasons. Wild animal meat can contain toxic substances, such as lead, mercury, and other heavy metals. Testing wild animal meat can help detect these toxic substances and ensure consumer safety. In addition, the meat of wild animal contains many different types of bacteria and parasites such as toxoplasma, Giardia, Trichinella, and more than 100 different types. These types of parasites are very dangerous for humans, especially pregnant women and young children. If you have ever bought wild animal meat, you will know that wild animal meat can be more expensive than meat from other sources. The average price of 10,000 pounds of wild boar meat is $13,000. Meanwhile, the average price of 1,000 pounds of farmed pork is $3,500. The price increased 3.7 times, which is quite a high price. This is because wild animal meat is often harvested manually requiring more time and effort. Wild animal meat is not always available. It is only available at certain times of the year, depending on the hunting or trapping season. This can make it difficult for consumers to access wild animal meat, usually around fall and spring. When plants grow, the climate is the best for wild animals to grow and develop. Many stores and restaurants will sell wild animals meat. Wild animal meat may have a stronger flavor or different texture than farmed meat. And some Americans may not be familiar with the taste or the texture of wild animal meat because they often consume beef, pork, and chicken.
Despite this, in recent years, there has been an increasing trend in the use of wild animal meat in the United States. This is due to the growing interest in healthy and sustainable eating. Wild animal meat is often considered a healthy and a sustainable food source. The rise of programs promoting wild animal meat, some organizations such as the Wildlife Culinary Association are working to educate consumers about the benefits of eating wild animals. American farmers are starting to consider using wild animal meat as an additional source of income. They are looking for ways to make wild animal meat more accessible and appealing to consumers. According to the latest 2022 American Wildlife Culinary Association survey, only about 10% of Americans regularly eat wild animal meat at least once a month. Although this number has increased significantly compared to previous years, it still remains low compared to many other countries in the world. Wild lizards have become a significant problem in many areas of the United States, attacking cities in a variety of ways. Lizards such as night lizards and the tree lizards are often dangerous by eating fish in parks, schools, and pond areas, reducing water quality and causing damage to aquatic life. Native fish species Wild lizards can also attack cats, especially kittens, causing injuries and even eating them. They prefer to eat the eggs of birds and other animals as well, causing damage to the native animal populations. Additionally, wild lizards may enter supermarkets in search of food creating food safety concerns. They also damage the poultry industry by eating chicks. Some of the areas that are mostly affected by wild lizards includes California, Florida and Texas. According to EPA estimates, each year, invasive lizards cause hundreds of millions of dollars in damage to the U.S. economy. Countermeasures includes awareness propaganda, trap and extermination, and the use of biological methods. However, the situation is still complicated and requires cooperation and interdisciplinary efforts to address the threat from wild lizards in the United States. Handshaking is a simple but highly effective method of eliminating lizards from a defined area. This is usually done by experienced people, rangers, or environmentalists. Before doing so, the catcher needs to wear thick gloves to protect themselves from lizard bites. They will then gently grasp the back of the lizard's head and pull gently.
Rope catching is a variation of the handshake method. Where a rope instead of hands is used, the catcher will prepare a rope about one meters long and tie it into a small nut at the end of the rope. They will then wrap the rope around the lizard and pull gently. This method is also very effective and is used in many areas across the United States. It is important that the practitioner must have the skills and experience to ensure optimal effectiveness. Invasive iguanas populations are causing significant competition for food and native animals. The iguana's habitat not only damages nature but also has consequences for infrastructure and construction works. Their burrowing behavior can damage underground infrastructure and create wildfire areas, causing a great risk to the community safety and the sustainability of the area. The spread of iguanas also carries human health risks. It can be a source of disease-causing bacteria, such as salmonella, exposing people to the risk of infection and related health problems. To deal with invasive iguana populations, American farmers have used methods such as line fishing, shooting with arrows, hunting, and using nets to catch iguanas, which are being deployed mainly in areas of the world. Areas where iguana populations have reached highly invasive levels, including Florida, California, Arizona, Texas, and Hawaii. According to a study by the University of Florida, these measures have achieved some significant achievements Florida's iguana population dropped from 10 million to 8 million in about five years of control measures. Methods such as line fishing have proven effective in catching small iguanas, which are often attracted to food placed on hooks. Meanwhile, shooting with string arrows is used to catch iguanas at a distance. Large animals are often attracted by the light and noise of the arrow string. Canada geese began invading Australia in 1860, when they were brought to Australia by an immigrant from England and released in Melbourne Park. By 1900, Canada goose numbers had increased significantly, with an estimated 1,000 living in Australia. In contrast, snow geese had a similar journey. Brought by immigrants around 1880, released in Melbourne Park, and by 1900, Australia had seen about 1,000 snow geese. Currently, the Australian government estimates that there are about 500,000 Canada geese and 200,000 snow geese living in the country. In addition, negative impacts of Canada geese and snow geese occur in urban areas. They pollute the environment by dumping feces and garbage on lawns and streets.
Their noisy sound also creates nuisance for the community. In Richmond Park, Canada geese have been an especially big problem. Not only do they have difficulty maintaining the park's green landscape, but they have also become a threat to the safety and livelihood of local people and animals. Their behavior of attacking people and causing harm to natural ecosystems has forced the Australian government to take timely countermeasures. Field hunting of geese has been proven to be the most effective method of controlling the Canadian and snow geese populations in Australia. Data from Australian government estimates that hunting has reduced the populations of these two goose species by about 20% each year. However, to ensure safety for the community and the environment, the hunting process needs to comply with some strict rules. Using highly accurate hunting tools is an important factor, helping to limit and discriminate shooting and increase the ability to kill effectively. Large open areas in Australia, including agricultural areas, river banks, lakes, ponds, parks, and nature reserves, are open to goose hunting. This is to control and minimize the negative impact of goose populations on the environment and the communities. To obtain a hunting license in Australia, individuals need to meet certain conditions, including being above 18 years old, having completed hunting safety training, possessing a hunting license, and having a hunting license issued by the Australian government. This is important to ensure those who participates in hunting activities to have adequate skills and understanding of hunting safety. Wetlands in Australia often see significant presence of Canada geese, including sites such as Macquarie Wetlands located in southern New South Wales, Coorong Wetlands in southern South Australia, and Kolola Wetlands in southern New South Wales, eastern Queensland state, These sites are not only important for Canada geese breeding, but also important for the migration in the Australian context. Australian hunters often use small boats to access swamp areas where geese are abundant. When they discovered a flock of geese, they approached gently and used hunting tools to carry out the hunting process. The shot geese will be harvested and brought back for processing. Each year, about 100,000 snow geese and 200,000 Canada geese in Australia are targeted for hunting, which is a significant number that helps alleviate pressure from goose populations, which are down about 20% annually. The Australian Swamp Rat is a rodent native to North America that has invaded this country quickly and strongly, originating from their introduction to Australia in the 19th century for ornamental purpose and hunting. Swamp rats adapted well to their new environment and began to reproduce at an astonishing rate.
Swamp rats commonly occur in wetland areas such as swamps, lakes, rivers, and ponds, as well as riparian areas, grasslands, and forests. According to Australian government and estimates, the swamp rat population currently reaches about 100 million, accounting for about 80% of the world's total. This impressive figure has created many problems for the Australian government. The swamp rat, an omnivorous species, has caused many negative consequences for the Australian swamps. They can eat grass, trees, and many other types of plants, leading to the degradation of vegetation, affecting biodiversity in the area. And at the same time, they can also prey on native prey such as birds, frogs, and fish, causing a significant decline in native animal populations. In addition, their excrement and waste in the swamp also pollutes the environment, affecting water quality. Hunting swamp rats in Australia is considered the most effective way to control the population. Although expensive and difficult to control large populations, it remains an important method of minimizing marsh rat invasions. Swamp rat hunting in Australia is often carried out by professional hunting teams, using various types of hunting equipment, these hunting parties often focus on swamp, grassland, and forest areas, where swamp rats often live and migrate. To have the right to hunt swamp rats in Australia, participants need to comply with certain conditions, including being aged 18 or above, completing hunting safety training, having a hunting license, and especially the hunting license issued by the Australian government should be established. This license is valid for one year and requires application and payment of prescribed fees. According to Australian government and estimates, every year about 20 million Swamp rats become targets of hunting activities. Despite population declines of about 10% each year, marsh rat populations continue to increase. This highlights the importance of implementing a consistent and a hunting approach to achieve effective control of swamp rat populations in Australia. What do you think about these two species and have you ever encountered or controlled their populations? Now let's go to another area to see how the farmers deal with other invasive species. Let's keep watching together. Wild rabbits are widely distributed throughout Australia, concentrated in agricultural areas, grasslands and suburban areas. According to the estimates, there are currently about 200 million wild rabbits in Australia. The Australian government has introduced many measures to deal with invasive wild rabbits. 
The war started a long time ago. In 1954, when these men discovered an area where many wild rabbits lived. They have erected fences around the area to begin a campaign to deal with rabbits. They used a machine to blow the soil from the rabbit hole area to the surrounding area. They use agricultural products that rabbits like to eat, poison them and spread them along the tailed area. So that no animals and people would be in danger, they placed a warning sign on the fence. After a day, they returned and harvested the rabbits. Rabbits are pelled into piles and will be buried. The number in the wild rabbit population has decreased greatly. About 60 years later, the rabbit population grew rapidly again. Each time a female rabbit gives birth, she can give birth to about 5 to 10 babies. They will hide under the grass to ensure safety. As a result, the rabbit population has grown rapidly. Versus the design to suppress rabbit populations. The RHDV2 virus was developed by the Australian government in 2017. Researchers here discovered the virus was spreading in wild rabbits. A virus outbreak in the wild rabbit population caused many wild rabbits to spread the disease. In particular, these viruses do not spread through other animals and hunting dogs. A series of rabbits were laying on the ground. Their corpses will decompose on their own. Hunting is one of the most popular methods of dealing with Australia's millions of rabbits. During the day, Rabbits will stay in their burrows with their babies because danger is always lurking around them. In the fields at night, with thermal sensors on hunting equipment, hunters have an easier time finding rabbits. They very quietly eat grass and plants. When a rabbit is discovered, the hunter immediately uses his skills to take down the rabbit. This hunter hunted continuously for about a week at night. He shot hundred bits. These rabbits run and jump very fast, so practicing hunting skills is very important for every rabbit hunter. After killing the rabbits found in the field, the rabbits will be harvested again and the hunter will move to the next grass field. According to estimates, animal rabbit hunting in Australia has reduced the rabbit population by about 20 to 30 percent. This is one of the most effective methods of dealing with wild rabbits implemented by the Australian government and people. Feral rabbits have become a serious problem in Australia, causing many negative impacts on agriculture and the environment. To deal with the situation, special measures have been developed, and among them, net traps Hunting dogs and trap cages are popular and effective methods.
Knit traps are the most commonly used method of dealing with wild rabbits in Australia. Setting knit traps is simple, and they're often placed in areas where there are many rabbits, such as grasslands and bushes. Although this is an easy to use and low cost method, it has some disadvantages, including less effectiveness than caged traps and the potential for injury to rabbits. Hounds are a useful tool in detecting and chasing rabbits. Hunting dogs are trained to detect rabbits, and when they detect rabbits, they signal the hunter by barking. Hunters then use knit traps or guns to catch the rabbits. Hounds have the ability to lead hunters to where rabbits are hiding, increasing their chances of catching rabbits. Cage traps are a more effective method than knit traps, but have a higher cost. This method works on the principle that the rabbit is locked in a cage while trying to eat the food placed inside the cage. The method of setting trap cages is similar to the knit trap and is often placed in areas with many rabbits. Although trap cages are more effective and do not cause injury to rabbits, they require more technology and cost more. The combination of knit traps, hunting dogs and trap cages is an effective method of dealing with wild rabbits in Australia. Knit traps are placed in rabbit-infested areas to attract rabbits. Hounds are used to detect and chase rabbits, and trap cages are used to capture rabbits once they are triggered. This combination increases efficiency and helps significantly reduces the number of wild rabbits. According to estimates, this method can catch about 120 million rabbits each year in Australia. So what methods do you often use to deal with wild rabbits in your area? Please comment below in the comment section to let us know. And for now, please continue watching this video. The beaver rat is a rodent native to Europe, introduced to the United States in the 19th century and has rapidly proliferated, causing many invasive environmental and economic impacts. This species has caused significant damage to the ecosystems and almost all agricultural products in Florida. Beaver rats often attack crops damaging food supplies and disturbing the balance in the local ecosystem. In particular, they cause great damage to the grasslands, burrowing and destroying the structure of grasslands, causing significant impacts on livestock and agriculture. To control the proliferation of invasion of beaver rats, trapping methods have been developed and widely used. In this video, we're going to look at two important methods for catching beaver mice. Trapping beaver mice with cages and trapping beaver mice with wire underwater. The method of trapping beaver mice with cages is based on the principle that when beaver mice approach the bait inside the cage, they will get trapped inside. The advantage of this method is that it is highly effective in capturing beavers' rats and causes little harm to the species.
However, it should be noted that the cage is large in size, making it difficult to move and deploy. The method of trapping beaver rats with steel wire underwater is a method of controlling beaver rats based on the principle that when they try to move through the trap area, they will become trapped in the underwater steel wire. The advantages of this method includes its low cost effectiveness and ease of implementation. When compared to other methods, setting up and using steel wire beaver traps under soy sauce is economical and does not require any resources. Despite its advantages, this method also has limitations that needs to be considered. One of the important limitations is that the potential for injury to animals other than beaver rats When other animals, whether native or rare, pass through the trapping area, they can accidentally become trapped in the underwater wire and become injured. This requires careful attention and monitoring to ensure that the method does not negatively impact other wildlife species. Therefore, when applying the method of trapping beaver mice with steel wire underwater, it is necessary to have a technical management plan and regular monitoring model to ensure the safety and effectiveness of this method at the same time, while protecting other animals in the impact area. Statistical data from the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission shows that in 2022, American farmers used the beaver trap method with cages to catch more than 100,000 beaver mice. While the trap method of trapping beaver rats with steel wire underwater has resulted in the capture of more than 50,000 beaver rats, Choosing the appropriate trap and method will depend on the specific situation and goals of beaver control in the given environment, providing a better understanding of the effectiveness and weaknesses of each method is essential. Beaver rats also affect aquatic ecosystems that build dams and change water flows, causing floods and degeneration of aquatic ecosystems. This can cause significant damage to native aquatic plants and animals, including fish, birds, and aquatic mammals. Therefore, beaver rats aren't only a threat to the economy and ranged lands, but are also an important role for the biodiversity conservation and the ecosystem management in Florida. To minimize the impact of the species, it is necessary to implement appropriate control and management measures in the future. According to the estimates from Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission in 2022, American farmers conducted hunting activities to control the beaver population with more than 25,000 beaver rats captured.
Beaver hunting has become a popular activity in Florida, especially in rural areas, to maintain ecological balance and protect marsh habitat. However, to conduct beaver mouse hunting activities effectively and safely, participants need to follow some specific principles and notes. Swamps are complex, dangerous habitats, and hunters need experience and skill to participate in this activity. They need to be fully equipped with life jackets to ensure safety when exposed to water, helmets to protect their heads, and goggles to protect their eyes from dangerous factors in the swamp environment. To increase the effectiveness of beaver mouse hunting, participants can use binoculars to observe the hunting area from afar and set traps and places where beaver mice often visit, such as trails, paths, and baited areas. Beaver rats are a common rodent, often appear in some areas and people's yards. In this situation, the method used to treat beaver rats involves capturing and then releasing them back into the wild. This is considered a humane treatment method for the species. By capturing and returning beaver rats to their natural environment, people have caused survival and ecological balance. demonstrating concern for protecting and preserving the environment while minimizing the encroachment of the species into human habitation areas. Although this approach can be considered a humane measure, managing and controlling beaver rat populations also requires an understanding of ecology and the effectiveness of specific measures to ensure preserving the balance between this species and the natural environment while ensuring safety and resilience for people and the agriculture. Although they are invasive species, but their population control is being done very well by people. Their meat is also one of the most popular foods. They're also contributing to the human food chain. What do you think about this species? Please leave your comments and thoughts down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video until here. And for now, let's continue watching the rest of the video as the usual. The Kangaroo the largest marsupial in the world, is also a native animal of Australia, with an estimated number of up to 50 million individuals. They form an important part of the ecosystem in this area. The main characteristics of the kangaroo is the herbivorous habit. They mainly consume grass, leaves, and fruits, often found in environments rich in vegetation, such as grasslands, forests, and parks. Kangaroos create a characteristic image of this beautiful country. However, the presence of kangaroos also means many challenges and problems. One of the biggest problems is the consequences of their encroachment on farms. Kangaroos habit eating grass and leaves on farms cause significant losses to Australian agriculture, with losses estimated up to $100 million annually. In addition, 
kangaroos often appear on the streets, causing danger to people in traffic. According to statistics, each year about 200 people are injured in traffic accidents involving kangaroos. This poses a challenge to both roads users and road safety programs. Electric fences have proven to be an effective way to prevent kangaroos from entering Australian farms. With the ability to create an electric pulse strong enough to repel them, this fence not only protects plants but also reduces the risk of traffic accidents caused by the kangaroos. According to a study by the University of New South Wales, electric fences reduce damage caused by kangaroos to crops by up to 90%. This not only helps protecting agricultural resources but also reduces pressure on farmers. In particular, electric fences can play an important role in maintaining traffic safety and reducing the risk of collisions with kangaroos. When it comes to the cost, Solar electric fences may seem like an expensive solution at first. However, according to research by the Australian Energy Agency, the operating cost of this type of fence can be reduced by up to 80% compared to traditional electric fences. This proves that despite the high cost, at the initial stage, solar electric fences are a sound and sustainable investment in the long term. Fences surrounding fields and residential areas play an important role in preventing the intrusion of kangaroo populations. By creating a physical barrier and limiting their visibility, fences help protect people's living space and food resources. At the same time, it also contributes to maintaining ecological balance and protecting biodiversity in the region. Kangaroo hunting is considered the most effective and popular method to control their population in Australia. Practiced by professional hunters and farmers, this method uses hunting gear and is performed at night to not pose any danger. Every year, about 5 million kangaroos become targets of this hunting activity, helping to maintain a balance between them and their habitat. This helps with protecting the agriculture from their destruction, especially during periods when kangaroos are reaching for food. In addition, reducing the risk of traffic accidents due to collisions with kangaroos is also a positive point. To minimize risks and protect the environmental balance, hunters need to comply with hunting rules and regulations. Having a valid hunting license, using the right gear, along with operating according to safety rules, are all important. The Australian government is also monitoring and controlling data on hunting activities, prioritizing areas with high numbers of kangaroos 
Although hunting is an effective measure, the Australian government is researching and looking for more and more effective and sustainable ways to control the kangaroo population in the future. There are many kangaroo parks in Australia. Important areas are established with the goal of protecting kangaroos from hunting and preserving their habitat. Some famous conservation parks in Australia include Ditbenbella National Park, a large stable located on the outskirts of Canberra, Australia's capital. This place is home to too many species of kangaroos, such as red kangaroos, grey kangaroos, and wallaby kangaroos. Another notable conservation area is the Kangaroo Island Conservation Park, located on Kangaroo Island, an island of the coast South Australia that is also home to too many important kangaroos. Introducing kangaroos into conservation gardens isn't only an effective way to control their populations, but also creates safe and healthy living conditions. These conservation parks often implement breeding programs to increase the number of kangaroos, keep their populations diverse and abundant, and prevent the risk of extinction. According to estimates by the Australian government, about 10% is preserved in national parks and reserves. This is not only a quantitative achievement, but also an important effort to preserve and protect rare animals from serious threats such as hunting and habitat loss. Keeping kangaroos as pets can have a negative impact on the surrounding environment, especially in the Australian context. The main problems associated with this behavior include the ability to escape, high fecundity, and the ability to compete with native animals. The kangaroo's ability to escape is a big risk due to its high jumping ability and agility. If not kept in a safe environment, they can easily escape and become members of the wild, creating an invasive situation. To minimize the risk of invasion from domestic kangaroos, Australian residents should follow measures such as not keeping kangaroos as pets, keeping them in a safe environment to prevent escape, and carrying out sterilization For birth control, in addition, high awareness of the problem of kangaroo invasion in the community is also important, and reporting immediately when detecting the appearance of wild kangaroos helps local authorities take timely measures. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, Please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well. Hello friends, in 2023, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, referred to as the USDA, estimates that wild boar herds in 35 U.S. states will total about 6 million animals. Do you know the reason why the number of wild boars here has exploded so strongly? What measures have Dixons used to deal with this invasive wild boar species? 
Join me to learn about the journey of dealing with ferocious wild boars in the following video. Do you know why the economy in Texas is severely affected? Because Texas is home to more than 50 invasive species 